Hello everyone and welcome back to this Tech Time. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that's a really useful tool in Linux. I'm going to be showing off GNOME Boxes. GNOME Boxes is an awesome virtualization solution that you could use to spin up a Linux VM or even a Windows VM on top of your Linux distro on your computer. And some distributions of Linux already have this built into it, so you might already have this installed. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you an overview of GNOME Boxes, and I'll let you know how to install it if you don't already have it installed. And I'll go over some of its features. You'll also see the process of spinning up a virtual machine in this video. And I really can't wait to get started because this is a new feature of Linux that I really love, and it's a lot more useful than trying to use a virtual box on top of Linux, in my opinion. So first of all, let's go over what exactly is GNOME Boxes. GNOME Boxes is an application of the GNOME desktop environment used to access virtual systems. It uses QEMU, KVM virtualization technologies to manage virtual machines and remote desktop connections. So like I said earlier, GNOME Boxes is a virtualization solution. It is really easy to use and you can spin up one or multiple boxes on top of your Linux distribution. It has tons of really useful extra features to it. For example, creating instant snapshots or sharing folders and USB devices directly through from the underlying system to the virtual box itself is really easy to do in GNOME Boxes. Now GNOME Boxes is Linux's alternative to using VirtualBox because GNOME Boxes is native to Linux itself as opposed to VirtualBox being something you have to go and install on top of Linux and have to make work with Linux. Now, all that being said, though, VirtualBox may still be the better tool depending on the situation. These are just two different types of tools for different situations. But GNOME integrates better within the Linux desktop than VirtualBox does. And Boxes is a lot more native solution to virtualization than VirtualBox is for Linux. But the one big downside of GNOME Boxes is that it is only available for Linux. You can't use it on macOS or you can't use it on top of Windows. But for me personally, I'm using Fedora for this demonstration, and I use Linux primarily on all my devices, so that's not a big deal to me. And the fact that GNOME Boxes integrates better into the Linux environment than VirtualBox does has made me switch over to GNOME Boxes for all of my virtualization needs on top of my Linux desktop. So to start, some Linux distributions are already going to have GNOME Boxes installed in it. And for this demonstration, I'm running on Fedora which already has boxes installed. So I would simply go down to show all my apps where you would search for boxes and there it is. And as you can see, I already have one Windows 10 machine in my GNOME box. Now, if you're running a distro and you don't see it in with all your applications, you can simply go to your app store and search for GNOME boxes. You can click on it and install it from there typically. In my situation, it shows that it's already installed and you can look over here and there's a couple of different options for how to install it. Now Fedora by default includes the RPM version of GNOME Boxes. For those of y'all that want the newest and best version of it, you can install the Flatpak version of it. So you would select it and then install it and the installation process shouldn't take that long and then you would see it in with the rest of your applications like I did. Now the first time you open it up, you won't have any available virtual machines like I have. You will have a welcome to boxes message here saying to click on this icon here to create your first virtual machine. Now, as you can see, I already have Windows 10 in here. That's going to be a longer video. That's going to be too long of a video to do for, for today. If you would like to see me make a video on that, leave a comment down below. If you're just starting with GNOME Boxes, what you would do is you would click the plus icon up here, and then you can install from a file, or you can download an OS system. So like if you downloaded your own ISO file for an image you want to do manually, you can install from the file and click here. But if you want to get started real fast, you can click download OS here. And what you can see is several pre-configured Linux ISO images here that you can choose from. Keep things simple in this video, I'm simply going to do an Ubuntu 24 desktop. And if you look up here, you'll see that it's downloading. So now you can see Ubuntu is starting up. And again, this is inside of a virtual machine. And so if you've ever installed Ubuntu desktop before, this may look a little familiar for you. So we're gonna hit next for English and speed things along. We're simply gonna use the default settings for everything and do next, next, next. I'm gonna tell it to install third-party software. Click next. And I'm gonna use the whole virtual disk. So I'm just gonna click next. I'm gonna give it my name. 
and I'm not going to worry about the computer name. I'm going to give it a super simple password. Click next. I picked up my location automatically. Click next. Review my choices and click install. All right, it looks like it's finished installing. So we're going to hit reboot now. And then we're going to press enter. And at this point, Ubuntu is installed. So I'm going to click back on the box and log in with my super secret password. So we have successfully installed an Ubuntu desktop virtual machine. And this virtual machine for Ubuntu is on top of a Fedora desktop. But there is still a little bit more setup to do to make it act seamlessly with Fedora. So I'm going to go ahead and click next here. And I don't like for it to send data, so I'm going to keep that off. And click next. And I'm going to skip all this application setup for now and click finish. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click and go to display settings. And I'm going to increase the scale a little bit because I'm having trouble seeing it. I'm going to tell it to keep the changes and close this. Now one thing I want to point out is the first time you start up one of these virtual machines, there may be some glitchiness and some lag to it. You can see it just a little bit here, but sometimes you'll see this the very first time it boots up. And what we need to do to fix this is to enable 3D acceleration. And this is something that you'll have to do for each virtual machine that you create. Now, the package you need is built into Linux, so we don't have to go out and install anything. Now, if this was a Windows virtual machine, we would have to go out and install the guest editions as you would for this to work. But even though it's already installed in Linux, it's disabled by default, so we have to go and turn it on. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to click on these dots, and we're going to go to Preferences. And you'll see here you can change any of the CPU, memory, or storage settings that you created when you first set up the virtual machine. And below that, you'll see 3D acceleration. So we'll click to enable that, and that should be it. So we'll close this box. So it's still looking kind of glitchy on my end. So just to be in the safe end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the power icon. I'm going to click it again, and I'm going to go power off, and I'm going to completely shut down my virtual machine. And now I can simply click again on the Bluetooth sandbox here that I created. So I'm going to log back in. And yeah, that's a good bit better already. Now, guest tools were already installed in my Linux distribution, and so I just had to go and enable it in preferences for the virtual machine. But if you're running a Linux distro that they're not installed automatically on, or if you're doing something other than Linux in a virtual machine, what you would do for GNOME boxes is go to this website here. And for a Linux version that you would need, you would click to download this guest station here. Or if you're running a version of Windows, you would download this version here. And it would do the same thing. It enables the guest options on your virtual machine so that it interacts with your underlying operating system better. So one of the really cool features of GNOME boxes is how easy it is to redirect a USB device. So if I plug in a USB device to my computer right now, and then I come up here and go to Preferences, Devices and Shares. You can see the USB I just plugged in, and I can turn it on. And then instantly, you saw a little USB device show up over here. And this is actually my Fedora installer. So if I wanted to transfer files from USB straight to my virtual machine, it's a real simple process. You can also create a snapshot of your virtual machine, and it's the same process as doing a snapshot in VirtualBox. It's a point-in-time backup of your machine. And it's really easy to do. You just again go to this menu here and then select preferences. And then you see another tab for snapshots. And I haven't created any yet, so I'm going to add a snapshot. And see it instantly created a snapshot here. And you can change the name of it and you can uh, revert back to it if you ever needed to. Or you can delete it. So it's a real simple process. And to enable folder share between your host machine and your virtual machine is really easy to do as well. You're going to go back up here and go to preferences. And again, under Devices and Shares, you'll see this icon for Folder Shares here. And click Plus. And then we'll select the folder. I'm going to choose my home folder. And then I'll just simply click Save. Okay, so my shared folder did not automatically show up for me, even though it showed the guest editions already be installed. So let me show you what I did. I did sudo apt update to update everything. And then I ran this sudo apt install spice web dev. DAVFS2 command. I'll put this command down in the video description. And then I rebooted. And then once I rebooted, I came I came to my file explorer. And then I see Spice Client. So if I click on it, I'll see my downloads folder. 
and that's the downloads folder on my host operating system. So GNOME Boxes is really cool and it has a lot of handy features and I highly recommend you check it out. In this video you got kind of a brief tour of how it works. If you found this video helpful please be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment down below if you want to see how to put Windows 10 in one of these, and be sure to share this video with anybody who may find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.